What's up everyone, Matt here. So I was in the community the other day and somebody was asking a question about if there's a way to stress test your app. And coincidentally, I happen to be just doing that right now. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can stress test your AppSheet app to see what sort of performance you can, you can expect down the line after it's got a boatload of data inside it. Stay with me. Okay, so the question was, um, I'm very new to app building and it might be a silly question, but is it possible to stress test your app to see if they will crash? Bunch of specifics. Uh, is there a bandwidth test or trend graph or performance test I can run or specifications that show if I can have too much information in the app? I don't know what the limitations are or how far I can push an app to the breaking point and accurately measure to prevent when an app crashes. So, um, there's a few things. So in the discussion there, someone brought up that there's uh, the performance profiler. And so you can absolutely use the performance profiler to investigate your app and to find out what, where's the slowdown? What sort of things are taking so long in order to do? So I'll go over that here really quick. Um, so in the performance profiler, you're dropped into something like this. Then you can scroll down and you have uh, one entry for every event that happened inside your app. And so you can just go in down here and you can see there's a duration column and you can see, so like this first app sync, the most recent one, took 22 and a half seconds to do. Now that's because I dropped in a whole load of test data because I'm doing a stress test. Uh, but then if you look below it, before I did that, it took six and a half, eight, half, you know, almost one second, one and a half second. Um, and so this is a place where you can come and you can see it just kind of a high overview. This is how long it takes to do X actions in different places. Cause they, they also tell you the place where it happens. So like this was the dev, I added a row to the dev checklist. It took less than a second. I edited a row on the orders. It took a second and a half. Uh, I did an app sync and it took 8.8 .8 seconds. So this gives you an overview of that, but then you can also dive in. So like on this one that took 22 seconds, if you click this little binocular thing right here, it opens up this deep dive into all of the steps that happened during the sync process. And there's some controls over here to help you kind of expand or control or simplify or make it more, if you want, it's all up there. But it, so you can see the sync took 22.49 seconds. And if I click these pluses, we can expand all of these things. You can see why it took so long. So the thing it was doing was reading my tables in parallel. And you see, I have a degree of parallelism of three. It means that I have three paths that are running at the same time. And then I can see read single table, like 18, 18, 18, one second, three and a half seconds. So like these ones that took 18 seconds, you can look over here. It was the orders, order details, and the products. So like, I'm gonna open this orders and then you can look and you can see what took so long. So it only took it a second to read all 10,000 records from my sheet that's over there. But it took it 16 and a half to do, to compute this virtual column, these virtual columns. And there's only one, which is related order details. So this is the reverse reference of all of the child records. So it took 16 seconds to generate all of the reverse reference columns because I have so much data. If we look at that child data, so then the order details, it took 18 and a half seconds. And if you, we expand all of this again, you can see there's a, there's a virtual column, but it only took half a second to compute those. So that's not the point that, that's not the thing that is drawing all, the, all of the time. What's really taking all of the time is just this, reading the table. So it took 15 and a half seconds just to read 100,000 rows with 31 columns. So that's where the majority of the time for this specific operation is going, literally just reading the table. So there's nothing that I can do in that scenario to make that any faster because it's just, I have 100,000 rows in the table. That's what's making it take forever. So anyways, this is the performance profiler. It gives you a nice overview of everything and you can deep dive into stuff. 
But now the real question was, can you stress test your app? And that's the whole purpose, whole purpose of what we got here. And the answer is yes, but not in app sheet, right? Not natively part of the platform. What you have to do is you just have to generate a whole bunch of sample data. Like I, I was, I kept saying I added a hundred thousand rows to the, to the sheet. I literally generated a hundred thousand rows of fake data to make all of this work. Let me show you how I do it. The service that I use um, <clears throat> is called Mockaroo. This was introduced to me by Santiago years ago, and it's a fantastic service that allows you to generate fake data, but like fake data in a smart way. So for instance, if you look at all of these lock in ones right here, those are the ones that deal with what I'm kind of talking about right now. You can see I have products, orders, order details, locations, and lo location inventory and adjusts. So this is obviously an inventory management system, right? And so what I did is I generated locations and products first. And so what you can do, and just so you know, you know, I'm, this is not a paid endorsement. I just, I use the crap out of Makaroo, it's awesome. So what you can do is you can go to schemas up here, you can create a new schema. And if you go to this more button down here, you can import fields from a, a CSV. So you just literally paste the header row from your table, like come over here, go to the whatever table, copy the first row and just paste it in there like that and hit replace all the fields. And then just like that, I've got all of my columns that are in this table. I got all of them, I got all of them inside here. And then all I gotta do is go through and start specifying like a quantity. This should be a number. And then I can be like, I want it to be anywhere between five and 100 with no decimals. And then you can get really crazy with all kinds of like formula based logic and oh yeah. Um, but then you can do things like this where since I generated the product stuff first, when you have a schema, you can generate a data set from that. And you could say, I want a thousand rows of whatever, right? So that's exactly what I did is I created a schema for my products and my locations. And I said, give me a thousand of each. And so now I have those data sets on this platform and I can use the data from them to generate derivative stuff. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you right here. So what I can do like on this product is I can say, choose the type and I can say it's a data set column and then I can choose my data set. So like this is the products and then I select the column that I want it to be. It's the product ID and then I can select how I want it to select the product. Do I want it to randomly select something? Do I want to custom base all of my uh, formulas and everything based off of the individual products? So these are the product IDs. So it's kind of a hot mess, but I could be like for this product, I don't, I don't want that one to show up for this one. I want it to show up twice as often as all of the other ones. So you can get really, really complex with the things you want, or you can just say, do sequential, just run through them all. Or this is the fun one, Cartesian. This is the one where <clears throat> if you have other columns that are set to Cartesian, like if I have a product, here, let me show you. I have my order, I have my location inventory. And so this one combines the product and the location and marries the two together. And you can see I have both of these set to Cartesian. So the way that the system generates this data is the first thing it does is it says, okay, product one, and then it says location one, two, three, four, five. So it generates a location for all product one, all locations for product one. And then it says, okay, product two, all the locations, product three, all the locations. And in this way, I'm able to generate one record for every possibility that's out there. And then it's just up to me to specify how many of those records do I want? You know what I mean? So this is what I use to generate a bunch of mock data. And then uh, I download these. So like on this order details one, if I show you this, uh, it literally has 100,000 rows. So what I did is I came in here and I generated a bunch of mock data. I said, make me a whole bunch of fake products, fake locations. 
I want some fake orders. I want some fake order details. I want some fake inventory locations. I want some fake inventory adjustments. So those are all the main tables that are part of my system. And I said, I want like 10,000, 10,000, 100,000. You know what I mean? I giant numbers, something where like I would never have that much data in the system. So this really gives me a true understanding and a good idea of what I can expect when my app's like two years old and I haven't been doing what I should do with data cleanup. Anyways, that's how you can do a stress test for your app. It's not a direct thing. You got to do it yourself. The performance profiler gives you some insights but that only really helps when you're facing the problems. If you're in the beginning where you just generated, you just finished making your app and you have no data, you have no way of seeing what the future is gonna be. That's where this Makaroo's fake data thing comes into play. Anyways, thanks for watching everybody. I sure do appreciate it. If you enjoy stuff like this, check out my Patreon page. There's some good stuff over there. Got some stuff coming this in the next three months for my patrons, they're gonna love it. Anyways, I'll see y'all in the community.